hello, it's uh, D. Roy Everett here, I guess is my name, and this is Death Piles and Taxes. I'm uh, kind of getting back in the swing of this. Uh, across from me is... I'll be Adam Beasley, the uh, tax man. The tax man, I guess that makes me the eBay of e-commerce, is that what we're calling it? I think that's what we I've say. been calling myself an expert, and now I'm thinking I might be getting myself in a little too much trouble trying to act like I know more than I do. I'm a I'm an aficionado, I'm a guy that sells online. You are a guy that sells online. And this is episode number 13 of Death Piles and Taxes. Can you believe we made it this far? I kind of can't. And after last week, I was kind of having a, uh, what, a uh, missing? What's that? I, you were gone. I was gone, but I missed you. You were, you were incognito. I, I told you, I said, get the briefcase in here and record a good show. And you said, oh, no problem, boss. We'll do her for you. And then I come back and say, did you record that show? No. I, I was... It was a good time when you were gone, let's be honest. Yeah, the cat's away, the mice will play, right? Now we're good. Are we good? We just had a little, little technical second there. Oh! And there's the, there's the siren. It's not a show without it. I was getting, you know, it's hot today. It's hot. It's snowing today. It was snowing yesterday. It is snowing. It's all over. It's been snowing. I come back from the Keys, it's snowing. By I key? leave the Keys, it's snowing. Don't you mean Bermuda? Bahama? Oh, yeah. You know, last week, well, I guess it's not last week because we had a bonus show, so people put me to work. They did put you the bonus show. Here I am on the, on the vacation, and I was, I was looking over some reviews and thought, well, there they got it, man. So Man, can we just get a short snidbit of that uh, bonus show? Snort, snort snidbit? Not snort snidbit. Oh, sorry. I was going with uh, what might have happened for that guy with the jersey, a little snorting problem. Oh, that's exactly what, you got? what happened. Man, my phone blew up with all of you guys talking about this. I didn't even have a chance to really look at it. Hey, I'm, 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 uh, I'm going to keep it kayfabe. I'm not throwing anyone's name out. I don't know what you're doing now. Now you got, now you got me nervous. I don't know. Just looking at all these guys uh, throwing us um, something about $5 million contracts, pencil mustaches. I'm not saying any names. I'm not liable. <laughs> Adam Beasley and Adam up accounting. Knickerbockers, Milkman. I'll say that I've learned people who went into coaching that I had no clue went into coaching. We got some good feedback on that episode. We're talking about the uh, Carmel Malone bonus episode. If you haven't heard it, go check it out. It's, uh, well, it's wherever you're listening to this. I had some funny feedback about that. I was talking to a fellow and uh, talking about the podcast and stuff. So, hey, we just did a bonus episode about Carmel Malone, you know. He said, why would you be doing a bonus episode on a guy that sells cars? <laughs> Shut up. Apparently, cars to some or car belonged to some people as a car salesman. So, <laughs> no, he didn't. He, yeah, true story, he, man. He was not joking. He, uh, no, sadly enough, he was he was not joking. He uh, wow. wanted to know why I had a bonus episode about a used car slash car salesman. Wow. Car Malone, uh, For those of you that don't know, has uh, some car dealerships. I'm sure, maybe probably Louisiana too, but around here, he probably does. And uh, apparently. He's not even a younger guy our age. I'll have to tell you. I'll, I'll drop his name later for you, but I'm not even going to give him the satisfaction of hearing his name over these airwaves. You know the nice part is, is uh, your buddy, they gave us a review. The, the, Which one? The, the old guy that used to be in our basketball leagues. Oh, yeah. Remember? I, I couldn't remember his name, and he told me his name. Yeah. What was his name again? Um, now you put me on the spot. It was, uh, it's Jay. Yeah, Jay. Well, but Jay, I'm not going to say his, I don't know if he wants me using his government name. Jay might be a little, he might be one that doesn't want me throwing out his government issue name. You know, I remember because Jay, back when we had the uh, nice leagues. Yeah, the know. fantasy, yeah, football, basketball. All Wait, that the best part is the smack talk. Oh, I think we're under siege here. I, I don't, is this place burning to the ground? No, it's all the hot deals we're going to be talking about tonight. <laughs> we got a lot to catch up on, so this might be an extended version of the show for those of you that haven't looked and seen how long this show, because right now they know it's over they, when they're listening to it. They, they know, it's, it's going like crazy. Yeah, we had some good smack talk back in the day. For those of uh, you that don't know, fancy sports, I guess they're still a thing. We just are. We don't just, have time to do them, but we, we had a, We outgrow them. We had a, a buddy league, right? Yeah. We had all of our friends, and I had a guy at work that loved it, and his name was Jay. And I want to say your last name, Jay, but I'm not going to because I don't need you blowing up my phone or I don't know. Anyway, so uh, these guys didn't know Jay that well. Uh, I had uh, so I I had Jay coming on the league, and he likes to he likes to run his mouth and smack talk a little bit. So and do you remember what I did with Jay? I no, this is like how many years ago? It was a long time. You know the only reason I still remember it's still my profile picture for Yahoo. Oh, Yahoo.com. <laughs> so my Yahoo. 
because um, that's how it was. It was on Yahoo Fantasy Sports. It wasn't back then you could make like your own avatar thing. Like I had to cut and paste <laughs> Jay's picture of his face on Sarah Palin's Dancing with the Star picture. This is how long ago this is where he's talking to Sarah, Sarah Palin on Dancing with the Stars. And uh, pre Photoshop? Is that, yeah, is that yeah. freelance Photoshop? And I think it still might be my profile picture. Now, why did you do that? Because we were smack talking. And you thought by dancing with the uh, governor of uh, Alaska, you had him right there or what? Well, yeah, I can't even remember what the details were. But it wasn't like, <laughs> I, that That was my thing. So when you said Jay, I'm like, man, I remember you. You were in the comments. You're like, hey, who's this, uh, who's this guy? We love those reviews, man. And yeah, there's some good ones coming in. Enough to get the bonus show, right? I'll, I'll throw out a good good shout out. The, one of the, the people that worked for me, her husband, Brian. He started listening to the show. You enjoy it? He said, you know what? I, those guys are kind of funny. Yeah, that, well, that's the thing, right? So maybe our content's not exactly the best, but our banter is. If you don't like our banter, you can pick up little things here and there. And We get off topic, and I'm going to tell you all about vacation stuff. You're going to tell me about what's been going on here. But in there, we weave it in. A lot of these podcasts I listen to about selling online, specifically, I don't listen to a lot of tax podcasts because I got you. But it's just, they, the devil's in the details, but they just sit there, and you might as well be reading a manual. It's just boring, right? I'm just, I'm driving home from work trying not to fall asleep. And so I'm like, at least with us, I think you get good conversation. You get good banter. Entertain me. Entertainment. I, a shout out to Uncle Steve's been listening to us. Uncle Steve's been telling the, telling some people that they should be listening to us. And my buddy Waddy. Have I ever told you about my buddy oh, Waddy? Oh, yeah, I know all about he Waddy. He binge, uh, binge listened to us the other day. Binge, huh? And so here, I, I need to tell you the story about Waddy. My, let's, my, hear, let's hear about Waddy. You got your show notes. I got my show notes. I have to make sure I hit things. So Waddy calls me a man of many talents. And I say, no, Waddy. I got, like, one talent, and I can exploit it. I can sell crap on the Internet to people. That's about, that's about my talent. But Waddy's got this five-year-old kid. And he's a lot, like, your kid's into football and knows all the stats and everything. They're, uh, they're up in Seattle, so he's got a baseball kid, right? Okay. And so his kid, like, total baseball guy. Okay. Knows all the players, knows all the stats. Probably like you growing up, you know, yeah. back of the cards, memorized, whatever. So big Mariners fan. So they're out in Kansas City right now okay. watching the Mariners play, doing a little roadie. So he's texting me last night. He's like, dude, my five-year-old is talking crap to these fans around us. I hope I don't get murdered on the way out of here, out of the stadium. I said, well, you guys win? Oh, we're up a run or something like that. I said, well... You're probably in luck because he's a five-year-old kid. Like, no one's going to, like, beat up a five-year-old kid for talking crap. Like, give him a couple years, right? So let's throw in the, uh, you know, what we talk about here. You know what would be hot Seattle Mariners stuff right now? I know. See, I'm not I'm not into that's the other thing with baseball. I'm not a baseball guy. I don't know. Have you heard of a guy named Ichiro? Oh, Ichiro. Is he back on the Mariners? Dude, where have you been, man? <laughs> I don't know. They brought him back for a special retirement. They oh, played, is he retiring this they, year? They already did. They played in the Tokyo Dome. Okay. They took him back. They, they went to the Tokyo Dome. They played their first two home games at the Tokyo Dome. Ichiro was a big deal when I was up there. Yeah. he's a, I knew he went to the Yankees. I don't follow baseball that well, man. Yeah. I'm uh, Maybe in October and it catches me, but... Yeah, you, you like soccer. No, I don't. You're a soccer man, not a... a football? Fan. football. They can go back to previous episodes and hear where you say the exact opposite. Yeah, I hope they do. That's good. So, so shout out to Waddy. Shout out to your kid. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if your kid ever got you in a situation where you're in a stadium and thinking, um, shut up. <laughs> no, no we, no. we haven't gotten to that point yet. But, you know, it, it's a good time of year. You know why? It's always a good time of year. Why, why now? Because it's April 11th. Okay, what's coming up in April fifteenth? Uh, fifteenth. This is going to be one of those evergreen episodes, which is funny. I've been doing some research, watching some YouTube videos, and I, I don't guess, sound so crazy now when I use terms I, like evergreen. I, I, do I? I heard evergreen. There you go. And, and I'm going to educate you because, and by you I mean the listeners. <clears throat> Evergreen's like one of those things that's always going to be good and relevant, no matter what. Doesn't matter if you listen to this in April, May, June, July, September. No matter what, April fifteenth is. Tax day, April fifteenth this yes. year. Well, 50, it's kind of one of those weird roaming days because if there's a Emancipation Day or something in Washington D.C., just plan around April fifteenth. Get done before April fifteenth, right? And I'm going to go out and throw this out there: you cannot get an extension to pay your taxes. You can get an extension to file your taxes, 
but your money will always be due. And if you don't pay it, they will penalize you. We don't like them penalties. And if you think... That's oh, like the red card in soccer. <laughs> see, I knew you knew it. Um, you just want a yellow or a green for go. <laughs> we're, we're not playing Simon Says here now. <laughs> NASCAR is green. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's that time of year, and it's going to be that time of year when you're listening to this. Plan for it. Plan to pay your taxes. Because the best part is, is when you pay taxes, it means you make money. I'm just ready to say death piles and taxes be done with the show right now. You got me no. taxes going on the mind. I, no, no. And we look, like making money. The reason I'm saying this, I'm in a pretty good mood. Yeah, because you're almost done working as hard as you've been working for like the last four or five months, whatever it's been. True statement. And you get a little break. I'm excited. You know what that means? You're the only one excited for tax day to be coming gone. You know, I, I really wish they would have extended it because it would have mean I could make more money. More money, more problems. Well, I'm hoping to get into this eBay problems. Yeah, there got. you go. There you go. We've kind of got into it in my household. That's what you. I, we, so we haven't seen each other for a few weeks, I know, and, and I do call. I, I call just to make sure whatever's going on, see how life is, and even in our phone call, ah, we got to save that for the show. I got some stuff to. I got some stuff to tell you. I'll save it. Save it. So let's just say the household's had a couple of chings in the last four days. Chings. I just had to get your uh, your. Your thoughts on a cha-ching for me. All right, let's hear about your cha-ching. Well, well, first off, going back to Wadi real fast. So yeah, he yeah. asked me a, a really good question. Okay, what well, yeah. He knows I was on vacation, right? Yep. He said, how do you handle your store or eBay when you're on vacation, right? I was going to ask you the same question. And that's something that I thought, well, okay, there's a few different scenarios, so let's let's run it down. So what I do, and I, it's just what I do. Other people do it. You can do it however you want. I guess that's the great thing. It's your store. It's your eBay. You can do whatever you want. I just change my handling time to like 10 days or, or 5 days, depending on how long I'm going to be gone. Okay. So I can still sell things. I just don't have to mail them for 10 days. Hmm. And so I'll change my handling time. I might send a little message to somebody if they buy something from me, like, hey, did you see it? I'm not going to be back till Thursday or whatever, right? I'll mail it as soon as I get there. Sometimes I'll do a sell on top of it so it just keeps people, you know, so you can you make money while you're gone, right? Yeah. So this time I just did my, my change my handling time. And that's it. Now you can you can put your store on a uh, vacation mode where it kind of hides all your things. I don't want them hiding it. Or you can just kind of turn your store off, so you're not going to make any sales. But but what I do is just change your handling time. Right? That's easy enough, and you can still be making. There's nothing better than sitting on the beach on vacation and uh, looking down at your phone, Cha-ching. and you, you're just like, oh, I just made fifteen bucks, and then you know. Whoever you're with is like, what? I'm like, I just sold whatever, 15 bucks, 20 bucks, whatever. And uh, then you just go back to whatever you're doing. You know, that's the thing that we've been talking about at my house. <clears throat> Getting excited, you know, sold some things. Um, learning, appreciate that, helping out. Learning how to ship some things, better ways to ship it, which I think you can answer my question for me. I hope so. I need to get some more of those Mylar bags that you have. Yeah, yeah. Like, we're, you, we're running out, man. I, all those stack you gave me. They're gone. They're gone. That's a good problem to have. Um, there's, I mean, so that's that's something too. There's companies all over. You can uh, you can buy them online, of course. You can open an eBay store like we've talked about getting before. There's a place just up the up the road here that you can get them from. So I'll, I'll talk to you about that. Yeah, we need to do that because I'm I'm listening. We're talking about this and we're selling on eBay. Do you want to know what we sold? Yeah. Well, of course I do. So what's up? Uh, it's, we've just kind of cleaned up the house a little bit. We sold some uh, jeans. New jeans that my son never wore because he grew out of them by the time he got them. Um, this is going to kick you. I don't know if you could ever picture this one. I don't know if I want to. <laughs> Just without looking in your eye. Tupperware. Tupperware. Oh, that's Tupperware. The, the vintage Tupperware. Vintage Tupperware. Yeah. You've been up at your mom's house cleaning up some shop. Grandma's. Granny's. You've been in Granny's cupboard saying, um, um, I'm going to take some of this potato salad. You got anything to put it in? I'll bring it back, I swear. That's a great idea. How did you get the magic marker with her name off at the bottom? Of? <laughs> Just change it from grandma. Just, everybody's got a everybody's grandma. Everybody's got a grandma. Tupperware. Yeah. See, I hadn't even thought of that. I, it's, it was a great thing. You know, we picked it up pretty cheap and sold it for some good money. I think we made maybe 10 bucks on it. That's not bad. You know, we just been kind of trying to figure out some things that... It's pretty fun, man. It is fun. I mean, that's the that's the good part about it. Is you just learn your groove, and like I was saying with the vacation, like just learn how to do it your way. Like I can tell you some tips and, and tricks that work for me, but they might not work for you, or they might not work for whoever's listening out in Sheboygan. With what you know, 
But it's the basics, right? You learn how to do it, and then you do it your way. So, I'm just trying to help people. So we're like what you talked about. Is it? You know, we haven't had the MacGyver thing because it takes time. Yeah, you'll get there. But base hits, and that's what we've kind of talked about. Is we got our goal. You know, we'd like to do three hundred dollars, like make, not sell, but like net mm-hmm. three hundred dollars in a month. Easy. And that's what we said. Is like, well, yesterday we made fifteen bucks. Yeah, you'll you'll do that easy. You'll you'll be amazed how fast you can make three hundred bucks in a month. And if we did that, then it's like, all right, now we go from because we figure three hundred. You know, that's that's a if we wanted that could be a car payment. Mm-hmm. You know, my wife's like, she, her car's older; it's been paid off, and we'd like a new one. But you know, I, I don't. I want to have that passive income to take care of it. It's kind of nice, even yeah. You can just have it, and like emergency comes up, or the kids want to go on a trip. Like, hey, we're gonna do a family job, so to speak. They're learning, you're learning. Yeah, you put that money aside, or or yeah, you want a car payment? Let's do this. So we're pumped. Oh, oh. Man, we're excited. It's, it's a good. <laughs> on the ride right over, I sold the wrestling shirt for fifty dollars. Oh shit! So I mean, oh, I don't want to. I don't want to <laughs> spoil your other thing. We may or may not have uh, did a little. Uh, what do you call it? retail arbitrage? Oh, you've been doing some retail arbitrage. Everybody, so so the funny thing is, I've been talking about this for years, right? And you're kind of the weird guy at the party when you're the guy that sells on the internet plus whatever else I do. Not anymore. Yeah, people are like, I found some M&Ms. I found the big bag of M&Ms. I'm like, list it, man. Get, get it up there. Just don't don't haggle on the price because eventually they'll fall out. And what I forgot to say is the chili nut was the slow one last time. Remember how I said they had the coconut? Or yeah. No, that was this time. Yeah. They had the coffee nut. Uh, the honey nut went really fast. The chili nuts didn't go forever. Okay. But when they got to the point where they were gone because they didn't win, people were fighting for them. So, I mean, if you got your little stash of whatever, you might say, oh, the jalapeno didn't win. It's not going. Give it a couple months. So what did you find? I can't even remember which one of us. We found a... Uh... Little wrestling doll. Oh no, I might buy it from you. Yeah, I know. I can't even remember who it was. Was it one of the uh, like the bigger like the the wrestling buddies? Uh, no, it wasn't a wrestling buddy. It was it was in like a it was in an action figure. Okay, it was a beefed up Ken doll. A beefed up Ken doll. <laughs> was it Brutus the Barber beef? No, Ken I, doll? I know who Brutus. It was it was one of these guys in the mid you know two thousands ish. That's so it was an older. Where'd you, where'd you get this over, like a clearance going out business yeah, type yeah, stuff? Yeah, clearance, one of the dollar places. That's, there you go. So we looked it up and figured, hey. So yeah, you looked at the solds and... We, we looked up some, you know, here's the thing. Like, we can talk about items and I don't really care because it's not like, oh, well, that's what it is. Is We watched quite a few videos and said, well, here's 25 things you can look for and sell. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny because then you start really thinking about it, saying, well, well what about that? You know a good thing we found? Pearl Snap shirts. The Pearl Snappers, I, like we were talking about when you had your original ones, right? And and we're learning to saying, well, because we thought, all right, let's get some vintage games, you know, some board games, things like that. Mm-hmm. But then we got them and we're like, oh, parts are missing. Yeah. And they're hard to ship. They're hard to ship. I did that. Yeah. That's kind of one. Unless you can get there's certain games that you yeah. go all in on. But, yeah, you'll end up. Or you can sell out parts. People buy the games and they sell the parts. And that's what I saw. I'm like, this is because... We bought some, like, Monopoly World versions, you know, some crazy cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, that's what we were looking at. All right, it's missing some pieces, but we could sell this little, you know, lost and found, you know, Wizard of Oz dog for three bucks. That's the, I mean, that's the thing you part things. I, there's just so many ways, what do they say? There's a hundred ways to skin a cat. Is that what the term is? Something like that? I don't know what you did on the weekends. There's a there's hundred ways to, to sell on eBay. Like, Tupperware. I never, I hear I've been doing this for years. Never thought of Tupperware. I don't know kids' clothing, because I'm obviously not in that world, so your kids' jeans. But, yeah, they grow out, pass them on down the road. They're happy, you're happy. I, it, was, it, it was really fun. It's, it's, it's becoming fun, so, you know what we're going to do? We're going to continue to try and sell and, you know, learn a little bit, and it's fun because now as a family, just like you're saying, you know what we do? We, we go hang out and pick up stuff. Go treasure hunting, right? That's what we do. You get the kids to where they're smarter than us. They can see things. They'll be like, hey, remember we sold this, you know, Three months ago, this is a good one. And then you're like, yeah, bingo. So you know what? Whatever we've been doing is working because we're starting to sell. There you go. Now I'm, I'm creating my competitions, what I'm doing. I'm going to see you out at the clearance sales and be like, no, nah, you stay away from that. That's mine. That's my area. This is my turf. Right? Turf war. I'll give you a turf war. Here's the best part. I know I can work longer, harder, faster than you. Well, I know what tax season is. That's when I'll hit it hard. <laughs> 
I can get I can get up at six AM, get to those yardies. The yard sales, that's that's starting up. Well, I mean there's some places where it never stops, but we're about there and then yeah, you'll get to see the people that it's funny because you'll learn and I'm sure you've seen it even now is there'll be people with their phones out, so you're like, Okay, that guy's a reseller, that guy's looking up prices, and then there's just other people and when somebody else grabs your stuff, you're like, Oh, they don't even know what they got. I need to get that. Put it back on the shelf. You follow them around the store, put that back on the shelf. <laughs> the hard part is is now as we do this we moved several years ago, and uh, we held everything we ever had for our kids. Uh-huh. And then we moved. When we moved, we took it all with us, and it was just a short-term place. And then we're going to move again. I'm like, we ain't packing all that. So we had a yard <laughs> sale. Time to go. Oh, we might have made 500 bucks at the yard sale, but now, like, we, we're sitting on 5K. Like, we had 5 yeah, well, that's, See, that's the thing. You're not only one moving, though. So this summer, you get out, you go to these yard sales, and you're like, okay, these people are in that situation. They're just moving. They want to get rid of the stuff. I'm like, hey, I'll give you 20, 30 bucks, and you take home a car full of stuff. And then it's listing it, right? And just like you're saying is is you buy a lot or a trash bag full of, <laughs> you know, little girl clothes for, you know, 10 bucks. If that, 5 bucks. People take nothing for it. Yeah. And you know what? You pull those items out. You put them on for 5 bucks because it's super easy to ship. You you know, you charge well, them. Light, right? Yeah, that's And that's what we're learning is what... Is easy to ship. And then, yeah, easy to ship. Why? I mean, postage wise, you're not going to be costing you a lot, costing them a lot, and then brands. And, and yeah, and the thing is, is, yeah, it takes some time to list stuff, but you know what? You could be making money in the future. You're just investing. Well, yeah, it's, it's work. I mean, when people, you know, we talk about this all the time, people just think it magically happens. No, it's, it's work, but you make the money, you're setting the price, so you can figure out what you're making in an hour. I mean, would you rather have a part-time job at your house with the TV on, with the kids around, doing that kind of work, or would you rather be down at the gas station hoping you're not going to get stabbed in the middle of the night, or, or whatever. You know, there's there's all sorts of side jobs or whatever. And, and for me, this has been one that I can go on vacation and I'm I'm making money still. It's it's uh, you're opening my eyes, my friend. There we go, and and uh, then you got the tax going. You're just you're just uh, you're farting through silk, my friend. Farting through silk. It's good to be preppy right now. Wow. <laughs> we, we've been out of the the rhythm for a while, but that's uh that's how that's how high on the hog you are, man. I, I'm in a good mood, my friend, because you know what we're gonna do next month. We're going to hit a little vacation, too. Oh, are you? oh, yeah, you're going back east, right? Going back east to northeast. So you know what we're going to start doing? Because this is what they said, is, is you buy those local items and you bring them, you know, you, you do what you can with them. Well, so so we're on, I need to tell you my whole vacation story yeah, a little bit. Let's, but, let's go back. Let's hear about but, that. Well, let, me, let me tell you this before I forget, because I get telling stuff I forget. Like you say, that local stuff, right? Yeah. So we're down in uh, Florida, and we're in Miami, and then we go down to the Keys. Well, in the Keys, I don't like coconut. But my, my wife and my dad, they love coconut. So they find these little key lime coconut patty things okay. covered in chocolate. Ooh. And uh, they, they get some and they're eating, oh, these are great. I'm going to bring these back for people to work. Okay. So we're just going to pick them up on Miami on the way out of town, right? At some grocery stores or whatever. Yeah. Turns out you buy them in the Keys. You don't buy them in Miami. We figured the whole state has them. So, of course, I do my due diligence, and I find where you can buy them, and I'm just going to have them shipped here, and they can give them to people. But also, now I know I'm going to buy them, bring them here, and I can uh, sell them online, right? There you go. So, without giving too many details, even then, even in that situation, like you're saying, find what's local, find what people want, find what doesn't travel out. Okay, I found something. And let's just explain that a little bit more. Like, you're getting Florida Key, Key Lime, these things... And and they you can only buy it there. Yeah, apparently I thought you could buy it even like a hundred miles away. Nope. So now what you're doing is you're taking that product and you're taking it back to wherever you live and selling it online. And then I can yeah I can buy more, yeah. bring it out. The, I mean they did have some in the uh, the airport. I guess they were like ten dollars instead of four dollars. I'm thinking well, I put them online for twenty dollars. Somebody's gonna be looking or want them, and people don't want to do all this research and find the thing like no. we will. They just want to look it up and buy it. So I'm happy to uh, arrange that for them. It's work. And then that makes that vacation a little more tax, de- tax deductible, right? That's where I'm going, my friend. <laughs> yeah, that's that's where we're going. We're making money, but we're spending it wisely. Well, I mean, it's investing in a company, right? That's, so so you're on this vacation. You're, you're going to hit this roadie. What, uh, what are some things you're looking for then? What What's the uh, game plan? Uh, certain type of jeans, you know, designer jeans. 
Okay. Just learning that a little bit. Um, you know, any kind of electronics. You know, trying to find out where and what could be uh, could be good. I don't think I'm gonna get into the video game thing. I think that's kind of one of those saturated areas, and I just don't know enough about it. It's pretty saturated, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm all diggity down with Tupperware. I, I think I think I think you might regret giving that secret out over these airwaves because that's something I've never thought of nor heard. But people have these parties and they have their favorite sets or their lids and stuff. I'm thinking right now that's a, that's a gold mine. And that's the thing we're talking like that the vintage like the the 70s 80s stuff. Yeah, the retro. I, here's another crazy one. You know what he found? Spray paint. Yeah, spray paint that goes. I have seen that. That goes. Like, um, the cry. They get discontinued or whatever, and yeah. they can't find their color, and they'll pay. They'll, yeah, you know I, I have seen some things on that. You know, what was another crazy one I saw. Rat poison. Yeah. So so I asked my dad about that, right? Because they're the little pellets. Yeah, it changed. He's he's claiming that has something to do with people making meth. I bet it does. And, I uh, bet you. They had to change it because. Whatever the that rationing was, or something, so that was one where I was like, "Oh, all right." And I thought about that too because I'm like, I'm "Like, why? Why would rat poison sell for a hundred bucks?" And I may or may not have known somebody who told me way too much about Reds. Reds? But, yeah. If you are if you are in the world of making uh, illegal substances, they I don't know. They were buy, they selling you a jersey at the time? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they were not selling me a Utah Jazz jersey. <laughs> game used, game worn. No, they tell it about methamphetamines and buying, you know, ibuprofens, and I'm like, as soon as I saw that last night, I'm like, that's got to be for me. Yeah, he uh, he works down with the, a lot of the that. farm type things, iodine, some of that yeah, stuff yeah. that they've really started regulating. And so yeah. I, I said, you got any of this at your store or whatever? I guess they were like pulling off the shelves, discontinued. Yeah. Like, uh-huh. if you have any, it's going. And he's like, ah, that's probably people trying to make meth. And I'm like, okay, well. Probably don't want to be on that list. Steer clear of anything that could. You don't want federal drug people drug. coming in and saying, "Why are you buying this meth stuff up?" or, or whatever. Why are yeah. you buying all this up? This is an illegal substance. You don't want yeah. to be on that radar. No, you do not. And it's funny because uh, as I watch and we look more into these reseller um, Facebook groups and things, you know, there's certain things that you can't sell on eBay. That's true. Uh, I think it was uh, was it North Pole or. There, there's jackets. certain brands. Yeah, you brands. Velcro is one. Velcro. You really? can't use the term Velcro, or they'll uh, they'll. It's called a um, what is it? A, I should have looked all this up. I didn't know we were going to talk about I this. Didn't, I didn't know either. They have a term for it. That I can't remember. It's like basically copyright, right? So they don't want their brand name being out there. So there's certain companies that if they see that you're selling their product or using their copyrighted term, so you have to use. Hooks and loops for Velcro shoes. Ooh, hooks and loops, huh? But, yeah, they'll come after you and get your... Did you v- say... V-Row, I think. It, maybe it is V-Row, something like that, violation. Did you say shoots and ladders? It might as well be. <laughs> well, uh, you got to tell me about some uh, some Florida Keys, man. I'm getting vacation-y. I think I'm going to take a couple days off next week. Yeah, it's just getting to be that kind of good weather. You get that... It is, man. That kind of spring fever. That's why... Even after you come back from a vacation, you're like, man, I wish I could just kind of live on vacation, but... You know, you got to come back to reality sometime, too. Well, if you'd start doing this full-time. Yeah, but it still work. You still got to do it, man. That's true. Unless but, you win that lottery or something. Even then, I'd still want something to do. But. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is this is a total up. Uh, so, when I was telling my little brother this story, he said, how many reviews do I have to get on your uh, on your uh, Facebook or on your podcast? Podbean. Podbean. Pod, pod, sorry. Podstar, Stitcher. Yeah, Critcher. Apple Tunes. Uh, uh, Shopify. For, for you to tell this story in the air, I said, you know what, I don't have a whole lot of content, I'm just going to tell it for free next week. So th- thanks for listening. Oh, a little A-Rod's going to give So us this has day. really nothing to do with selling on eBay, but it's a pretty good story, so that's, hunker, hunker on down. That's and, most, most of our show. Yeah, that's, more, that's 90% of our show, right? <laughs> Death piles and taxes and us rambling. So uh, Thanks for listening. Yeah, thanks for listening. So we went down to the Keys, as I've said like 20 times already, in Miami. And it's me, my wife, and my parents. And so... Apple bottom jeans. Apple bottom jeans. We saw the boots with the fur. The whole club was turned. They were looking. Woo, 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 woo. Um, so, when that's the case, like, I did I did all the planning, right? So, I'm getting all the hotel. Well, we did Airbnbs. So, I'm getting all the Airbnbs, the rental car. I'm taking care of our flights. My parents took care of their own flight on that one. Um just everything. So I'm trying to plan everything out. I'm, I'm thinking I've done all my due diligence. So the first couple of days are going pretty good. We're going, like I said, we start down in Miami, drove down to the Keys. 
And we come back and we're at this condo on the beach. And it's like a five-star condo, Airbnb. Okay. So the guy that I get it from, English is not his first language. He lives in L.A. somewhere. Obviously, it's like a half-million-dollar condo or something like that. Nice. It, it's nice. But security is pretty tight. And he sends me over a PDF of, like, instructions to get into the place. So I'm like, okay, this is going to be a little difficult. And I got these these uh, people with me that don't understand what I'm doing because my wife's never, I, I just do it, you know, and my parents are never really airbnb to the point that they're, like, staying in somebody else's house is kind of a, kind of a different uh, idea for some people, you know. Yeah. Let's just get a hotel. I'm like, I can do this half the price, and it's, like, it's a lot, lot nicer of a place. Yeah. So we get there. And, of course, there's those little uh, gates. What are those things called? The gates that come down that you need things to go through, like a like a railroad crossing, basically, but inside parking lots. It's called a gate. So there's gates. <laughs> and uh, not Bill. And so we get there, and I have this whole list of instructions. Well, I'm supposed to go back and get this parking pass, but I have to get up to the room to get the parking pass. To able to get to the room, I have to go through, like, three gates. I can't get through the gates because... Robert, the valet, is not letting me go through because I don't have the credentials to go through. And I'm explaining to Robert, no, I'm, I'm here to go up to the room where I'm going to stay, but I have to go up and, well, you have to get a fob to go to the room. Okay, how do I get a fob? Well, you go to the office. Okay, where's the office at? Oh, they're closed. <laughs> well, I'm staying here tonight, Robert. Well, you need the fob to get to the room, and you can pay to park here. Well, I shouldn't have to pay to park here because right here it says I have a parking pass, but it's up in the room. So you can see where this is going, right? Are you dealing with a governmental worker? And so I'm like, oh, man. And so I, we have the minivans. I parked over the minivan and got the hazards on. So I'm, I'm having him read the PDF and it's all this instructions. And he's like, I don't know what to tell you, man. And you can pay me uh, 40 bucks and you can park here. And I'll give you a temporary thing. And you can come back in the morning when the office is here. And you can, uh, you know, get your fobs that you need. And if you have a parking pass up in the room, you can bring it back and we'll give you your money. I said, so you think I'm going to give you $40 cash and I'm going to come back tomorrow and I'm going to show you that I got the stuff and you're going to give me my money back? And he goes, oh, yeah. And I started laughing. Sucker. I said, there's no way you're giving me my money back, right? But it's been 20, 30 minutes and I don't even know if i got a place to stay for the night, so i got to get in gear. i got to get stuff going. <laughs> I'm sure the fan dizzles like, what is going on? Oh, they're over in the car, but they can see me negotiating and, and doing my thing. And I'm sure they're thinking... We're either sleeping in the Walmart parking lot tonight, or Derek's getting arrested. <laughs> he's he's been conned. We paid money to stay at this place. I, I'll be honest. Whoa, uh, I've never stayed in Airbnb. I'm kind of one of those same people. Like it's just kind of weird to stay in somebody else's house. We we've stayed in a, a few times out in L.A. Um, this trip up to this point, we've had no problems. All really nice, like beachfront, nicer than you can get a hotel. Okay. Anyway, so so I okay, Robert. So. I said, well, how can I get up to the thing? Because I can't get the fob from the thing to, to access the building. Well, you can go around back, and you can go up through the back. And part of it was when we brought in our bags, we had to go through the back to the service elevator because you can't come through the front with your bags because the rich people that live there might see you. I don't know. So I'm, I'm already a little little shady on I've, I've been smuggling things in is what it feels like to me. And so... Uh, so I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to make sure I can get access, at least if I can get to the room, access the room. But then I know we got a place to stay before. So I go through the back of this building, and, uh, well, doors are locked, so I have to wait for somebody to pop open the door. Oh, and I'm going through, and I'm trying to get to the service elevator. And I'm, I'm shaking the door or whatever, hitting the buzzer, and nothing, nothing. So I'm like, okay, okay. Let's, so, let's just paint, like, a, a picture here. Not saying, but you're not probably one of the normal guys at this uh, establishment, right? Well, it turns out there's a lot more people like me. Once I get talking to folks, this isn't just Derek's problem. This is more frequent than you think. And so, but yeah, it's probably a higher end people yeah. that don't want to see people like me dragging their stuff through on vacation <laughs> with my bright American flag shirt and uh, flip flops. Flip flops and which way to the beach and uh, <laughs> beer koozie in one hand and a lotto <laughs> ticket in the other. But. This other, this elderly couple comes and they said, you need to get in. I said, where's the service elevator at? And they almost right through this door. And I said, I can't get in because I don't have the, the fob, but I'm supposed to have a room up here and so on and so forth. And they said, oh yeah, this just happened to us the other night. So I'm like, okay, well, will you let me in? So they let me in and I get up and I, 
uh, this is going to be a long story, folks, if you haven't figured this out. I'm thinking where I can cut stuff. This is going to be a long story. So this might be a longer podcast. So <laughs> so if you if you don't like the story, go forward like 20 minutes. <laughs> but if you do like it, just, just sit right there. 20 minutes. <laughs> give or take. So... So this elderly uh, couple lets me in, which is what you think of in Florida, and I get in the service elevator, and I go up to the room, and I have a code to get into the room, and it works. I get in the room, and it's nice. Like, we're talking like, my dad measured. It's a five-foot long, uh, flat-screen TV, 4K. Five-foot. Five like, yeah, five-foot. <laughs> and uh, nice. Like, it's really nice. Oversees the beach, everything. So I'm like, all right, got in here. They're still down in the car with Robert at the valet that we can't get into park that I paid the forty five dollars to, or forty dollars, whatever it was, and he because I'm like we need a park like so so he does all this I'm like yeah I'm give I, I've lost that money he's basically to park for the night's what I'm thinking, and so I go back down the service elevator but before I go out I go to the front desk and there's a gal there and I said hey, explain the whole story to her I'm sure she's heard it before lovely, and she looks at me she goes yeah. I was trying to buzz you in, but you were looking at your phone the whole time. Well, I was trying to read this instructions on the phone, and she doesn't say anything through the intercom, so I'm just buzzing away. Because <laughs> I don't know if it's open or not. You don't hear the gate go, eh, you know. And I'm like, well, I was looking at my phone. It's not like I was cruising Facebook. I'm, I'm trying to read these instructions to get into this place and, and, you know, get the apartment number, get the code to get into the door. And so she's kind of copping me a little, too, but I'm like, I'm not, I'm sorry, like, where do I park now? Because I tell that whole story. Oh, just anywhere over here. Well, this guy up in his room had a, a parking pass, right? Okay. So I did grab that. But by the time I go back, I'm, I'm ready. Let's, let's get out there. Let's, like, I'll deal with all the other stuff in the morning when the office is open. So I have a parking spot, but because I paid Robert the money, I can just park wherever I want. That's not the covered park. Allegedly. Allegedly. Hey, buddy, you can park anywhere you want. Give me 40 bucks. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, but I can go through the little gates now. Those little bars are lifting up, so. I, Until Robert goes in. And he <laughs> turns it off. So I, I, so I back us up to the service elevator type entrance at the back of the building and unload everyone's bags and we get up and, and put everything up for the night. I go park the car and. It's like, okay, well, well, where are we going to eat tonight? Because I sure don't want to go back out. No one wants to. I don't know if we can get back in if we get back out, right? So we do. Have you seen the uh, DoorDash or anything like that? I've heard of them, yeah. So we, we go through that. We, we come up with what we're going to have. And so we order it. But before we order it, I talked to the lady at the front desk. I said, um, if we have somebody come and bring food, <laughs> I think we'd be able to access where we're at. Or can you get a hold of us? And she goes, well, where are you staying? So I told them. Oh, yeah, I'll let them right in. They can come right up. I'm like, they can come right in. They can go right up. But me, I need a key fob. I need a parking pass. I need... I'll... So it sounds like you just taught me a lesson. So what lesson's that? Because we're not even halfway through this this journey. Long story longer. All you got to do is say, I'm Jose from Deal Dash, and I'm here with your burrito. Go on up. Go on up. Where you want to go? And so, yeah, so we get our food. So everything goes kind of good that night. I have to set an alarm because I'm going to be first in line when that place opens in the morning. Well, but you just you skipped over the best part about vacation. What's that? What did you get to eat? Oh, we got some Boston Market. You have to go through what's available. So I got a half rack of ribs and a uh, rotisserie chicken. We got a few of them, and my mom got like a salad or something. Oh, man. Or no, she got a pot pie, I believe. I'm... So you're you're ruining vacation, man. It's it was nice. It came right. They were missing a few things uh, that they didn't get delivered, so I had to call up the Boston market and say, "Hey, we're missing a few side salads and things." So they actually credited me back. So when I look at the credit card bill, we paid fifteen dollars. Well, it's not, and uh, we got like four meals. I get. I mean, I and I'm sure you were, you were getting back to the hotel, and it was you know I'm all about eating. Like when I go on vacation, like I'm all about eating. Like eating what's there. Sure, like, yeah. I look on Yelp. I mean, I'll oh, we were that. all for the seafood and stuff. It was just I didn't know if I drove out if I was getting back in that night. So we were we were in the compound. You just need to give Robert another forty dollars. That's the problem, right? <laughs> <laughs> and Robert, I don't know if he was working all night or or if I was just gonna come back and have to try to find some street parking. And there wasn't really street parking where we. This was. Uh, I wonder how much Robert makes a night from Yahoo's Robert, like you. Robert makes a lot of money. So, so the next morning, set the alarm and uh, get dressed for business. <laughs> so yeah, it, it opens at nine. I'm down there at nine, 
and there's Robert. So I got my uh, I got my thing. And I'm like, hey Robert, you got my money? Here's the parking pass. And he goes, what are you talking about? Oh, of course. And I say, I know what you're talking about. You took 45 bucks from me last night. The whole scenario. Oh, you have a parking pass? Yep, right here. Okay, well let's. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. I said, no, you need to give me my money back. He told me if I had this that. Well, let's go talk to my boss. And I said, well, I need some uh, little fobby things, too, so we can get in the in and out of the doors. How many days are you staying at this place? Uh, th- well, that's part of the problem. Uh-oh. I thought four. The parents were leaving after three. I thought we had an extra day. No spoilers. <laughs> oh, sorry. No spoilers. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't, on my parking pass with Robert, so I was there till Friday. I don't know. Are we losing listeners by this? Are we entertaining? I, uh, they either love it or they hate it. And so, uh, I've got people liking my stories. I don't know. So <laughs> I like it. I'm entertained. So. so I go and go back to the, the offices, and i got to explain to everyone what's happened. And then somebody else's boss comes, and I have to explain to them what's happened. And I'm like, so he charged me the 45 bucks or 40 bucks or whatever, and here's all my paperwork, and here's the thing. And the people say, well, they can't do that. They can't do this. They can't do that. Well, somehow this guy put us in the system as, like, his guest. Whatever. So they're like, oh, he did it right. So we can't screw you out of your money, basically. And I said, well, just give me a copy of this paperwork, and I'll send it to him. And he can pay. I don't care. Somebody's paying me. If he didn't give me the right instructions, something's got to be covered. So eventually they just give me my money back because, like, bigger fish to fry or something like that. So I actually did get my money back. Wow. And so then I have to go get my fobs. Oh, there's no reason. You, your four-day stay, I know I turned into three-day stay. Yeah, yeah, you're that guy. I'm that guy. Everyone in that place, they knew me. See, uh, you're learning slow. I think I'm trying to tame it down a little bit. You ruined your fourth night over 40 bucks. Well, you would think so. No, no, I know so. So then we go and we get our little, uh, little uh, key, key fobs. fobs. And those are 20 bucks. Okay. But you got to have one for ev- for every two adults. Okay. And okay, whatever, and they'll refund it or whatever. You're barely an adult. Yeah, like prove it, right? Exactly. So okay, so do that, and well, you have to have a wristband to go to the pool, or else you know, so we know that you're on the property. Okay, well, I got four adults. Well, they all gotta come down. I can't take back the wristband. Nope, everyone's gotta come, and so I gotta go grab everybody. I'm already tired. This is vacation. And so I got to go grab everyone, have them all come down, put on the little wristbands that say that you're staying at this place and that you can go to the pool, right? And so, well, it'll happen. So that half half morning or whatever, it's gone. But yes. then we go out to the beach. We have a great time. We uh, hang out at the pool. We go out to eat, eat some crab. I know you're a crab man. Love crab. Had some king crab. We just had a great time. Well, the parents have to go home because they went home an extra day before us. So we drive them to the airport. I'm kind of skipping here. So we drive them to the airport. Dad leaves his fob for me. <laughs> That's nice. Drop them off at the airport. And we're, we're going. We do a little shopping on the way back because mm-hmm. we're out and about. We go to the, the Wawa. The thrifting? Well, you were doing thrifting, right? We did a little shopping. We go, But not, not as much as we probably should have done. Don't don't tell me I do your taxes. I know that's what I'm saying. I'm doing some shopping, <laughs> <laughs> buying our Powerball tickets. Hey, there you go. Filling up the car, hitting the hitting the Wawa, getting us a. I don't know what Wawa it, is. It's a gas station, but it's, it's really nice. Is it like the Piggly Wiggly? It's like better. You know, our Mavericks are like the nice gas station around here. Yeah. This yeah. makes Mavericks look like a, a, a scummy place. Wow. They're nice. They have like a little deli Contessa in there that they'll make you. They'll make you some, <laughs> some food. A deli Contessa. I'll make you a nice Cuban sandwich. Oh, was it like the Espanol? Was it real good down there? It was really good. Did you get some uh, Cubano food? Uh, we did, a little bit. Some empanadas? I, I don't know if we had empanadas. I was just lying to you and say, yeah, they were great. <laughs> hey, you ain't getting your haircut today, bud. Hey, bub, you're not, you're not getting it done today. We had the world's best gelato as voted by somebody. Ooh. We took a little tour of the city. We had a really great time. And so, take the parents to the airport, trip's over, we're going to go home the next day. Well, we're getting ready to go back down to the pool, right? Okay. Because what do you do on vacation? Well, I'm getting ready to slip into my bathing suit. Oh, no. Remember, (laughs) family show here. It's a family show. And the door, we're on the third story. So, when people come in and out, it kind of, the wind would kind of, like, suck the door like a clap. So, so you'd you'd hear a, a... 
kind of like a shutting of the door, but it was just the, the hallway. It was just kind of how it worked. So I'm getting ready to, to put on the bathing suit, and my wife's like, somebody's knocking on the door. I said, no one's knocking on the door. It's just, they're coming up from the hallway, and it's, you know how that sucks, that door closed. It, you're, that's all you're hearing. And then then I do hear, like somebody's putting the code for the door. Oh. Like, oh <laughs> this is not good. And uh, so um, and so I'm, I'm going out because I'm going to open the door, but I'm going to put on my shorts as I go to open the door. Because... <laughs> Not like maybe they're not whatever. Well, some she's uh, the maid just <laughs> barged in her head, the house cleaner or whatever, and like, um, and I'm standing there like I'm a matador <laughs> with my own shorts covering myself. <laughs> and uh, I think we've seen that move about ten years ago. Yeah, this wasn't so. Uh, yeah, it's about like that. So I'm I'm trying to cover myself just with the front of my shorts, and I'm I'm uh, nude <laughs> with my with my shorts in front of me. With her coming in, she's like, um, I'm here to clean or something like that. And I'm like, no, we have till Friday. <laughs> we have till Friday. <laughs> this is Thursday. Jeez. And she's like, oh, oh. I'm like, no, I, we're, we're here till Friday. And she's like, oh, I'm so sorry, so sorry. I'm like, I'm sorry. Yeah. So she shuts the door. Well, automatically, I go to my phone, look on the Airbnb app. I was there till Thursday. <laughs> Jeez. So I see that. So I look over at my wife. I'm like, uh. Get a pack, and she is coming back. We need to go. We were supposed to be checked out at ten o'clock this morning. Somehow, in all my planning and preparations or whatever, I thought I'd booked a different day. I didn't. This whole time, I'm trying to get a hold of this guy when I'm dealing with Robert down in parking. He can't bother to be texting me back or let me know what's up. Like I'm trying to get a hold of him because I'm having a hard time getting checked in and everything. Well, he surely can get a hold of me when the housekeeper tells him that uh, we're still there, right? <laughs> So I'm trying to gather up garbage, and we got stuff in the fridge and stuff, and I'm just like, my wife, bless her heart, man, she is, she's just packing stuff up, and like, okay, we're good to go, I'm, I'm like, I don't know where we're staying tonight, and the lady comes back, knocks on the door, I'm like, I'm sorry, I thought we had till Friday, come on in, I'm sorry, we're leaving, we're getting all our stuff, we're leaving, okay, bring, make sure you bring up that parking pass, make sure you bring up that parking pass, I'll lose my job if you don't have that parking pass, okay, I'm bringing it up, we bought... We bought a bunch of fruits from a fruit merchant that were in the fridge. So I'm trying to go through what fruits we're keeping and which ones we're... we're but at the same time, we got to get going. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> we we got we to gotta slow down here because you're losing it, man. <laughs> you, you, the, the I'm main. just getting started. Oh, gosh. <laughs> we gotta, I don't it know gets if, better. I don't know if it can get... Let's Let's... So you're in the the place that you're for certain that you have till Friday, and not only did the maid come in and you were uh, in a um, compromised position. My dad said when I told him it was like the Toro of the bull. He said that was the one horn one horn matador. I believe is what he called me. <laughs> wow. I don't know. Ole. Ole. She, she probably spoke Spanish, too. Oh, Gary, yes. There's no maybes. <laughs> I'm being nice. I, everyone in Miami apparently speaks Spanish. Well, so, all right, all right. So you're you're mad dashing to get all of your stuff because you missed Once the Once I realized that, it, yeah, it's, it's we got to get out of here. We'll it's figure it it's out. not Robert's fault. It's Derek's fault. Yeah, we're leaving at 6 in the morning for our flight, but I need to find some place to stay for the night. So you're <clears throat> mad dashing, getting everything out of the room... Your your food, your thrift items that you're going to bring home because this oh, is all my souvenir. Yes, this everything. Is, this is a business trip. Oh, it always is. Okay, so that's where we're at in the story. And you tell me there's a lot more. There's a lot more. This is the tip of the iceberg. Oh my heavens! Can we handle any more? <laughs> to be continued. I don't know. Give it to me. So we get our stuff. We get out and uh, we get to the car. Well, I automatically I'm going over to Priceline, right? Because I'm like I need to find some place. We're, we fueled up the car. We were just going to hang out at the pool that night, go out and eat, and, and wake up in the morning for our flight and leave. You're much more... I, I always go to Hotels.com. That's my go-to. Well, I'm, I'm bringing up the Priceline app. I'm, I, like, I'm not going to Airbnb it at this point. Yeah, but airline, like, I don't like not knowing what I'm getting. So, oh, well, you can see reviews and stuff. This one's my bad. I thought at first this dude talked to Robert and they got me, but I'm like, no, I just made a mistake. Okay. So... 
So I'm like, but I got a place. You're mad dash. And, I, and it's not like me and you where we can just stay at some, you know. Jackpot Nevada. Jackpot Nevada hotel. Like, I got my wife with me. It's got to be somewhere. I mean, not, it, it could be a sketchy area or it could be a nice area. Like, you drive a mile either direction, it's, you know. Spend the extra money. You pr- Prince to, to Popper or whatever you'd call it, right? Uh, I hope you spent the extra money. From, so, from where you tell me the tip of the iceberg, I'm guessing you went chintzy. So, I'm looking on Priceline. And I see a four-star um, hotel point one miles away from me. Now, there's only five-star, then four-star, then three, two, one, right? Looking at, this looks nice. Yeah, but you didn't know what hotel it was. Oh, I did. Well, I thought they, they didn't give you the name. I didn't those. go to the negotiator. No, sir. <laughs> I went to close because I fueled up the car for the rental car for the return. We're, you know, 20 minutes from the airport in the morning. We're leaving at 6 a.m., I need a place that's not too far away. All right. It's all right. a .1 mile across the street, basically. Okay. And I can see it four stars. Okay. I didn't really read the reviews. Oh, goodness. And I'm like, it's, it's a place to go book it for tonight. You didn't, so, you didn't even drive by to check it out first? You know. This is why you need to bring somebody who's, like, in the position, like, who, who can help you out. Because that's the thing. I mean, your your wife, your mom and dad, they just rely on you. Well, it was a panic mode, though. I, this was, you know when you get into flight, fight or flight? I get it. You're, I was, uh, I've we screwed got, up plenty of times. We need a place to stay for the night. And uh, I'm not going to be down at the, uh, the, the Trumps were down. The, there was like three or four Trumps around us, the, the International and the Tower and the Mahal. Okay. I'm not going to spend, you know, half a paycheck or better for a night. <laughs> so you went to the... four star. Okay. So I'm like, this is a nice place. And so uh, get in the car. I'm like, don't worry. Figured out where we're going. So put her in the GPS. And you have to go off this round. And you have to go this special. It's confusing to get there. So I get us there. Well, it's valet parking only. Okay. Here's the keys. It's going to be an extra 20. Because well, you're going to have to tip and pay and whatever. What's his name, Robert? Everybody's name in Florida is Robert. Roberto. Robert. So... Hey, here's the keys. Hey, thanks, you know. Here's your ticket. When you need it, come back. And I'm thinking, I'm just going to do an Uber for, for dinner or whatever. We'll do Uber, Lyft, down to some restaurant. That way we're not paying the tip and we're not using the gas. And they'll yep. just park it up in the wherever they park it. Bring it down in the morning. We'll get out of Dodge. Hey, you want a, uh, uh, what are them, them racks or whatever they push around for your stuff? Oh, yeah, one of the clothes racks. You want one of them clothes racks? That would be great because I got half a fridge thing. I don't know what we got. But we're sorted through some bags, some fridge items. Well, actually, I I went and I've checked in off, obviously, too. So I go and check in and then come back out and uh, and all this. So we get the rack. Well, with the rack, you get the bellhop guy. I just want to pull my own rack up to... We were, like, on the 22nd floor of this place. They don't let you do that. So it was, like, 22nd floor. So it's nice, up up high. (laughs) So, yeah, they don't let you do that. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to have to throw this guy. You know I'm cheap. So I'm going to have to throw this guy a few bucks. So he takes us up, and we go into our, our room, which wasn't quite four-star, but it would do for the night. Beautiful view. Beautiful view. Okay. Uh, bring it in. It's a little tight quarters, but a couple not double beds or something. And I'm like, oh, hey, we'll, do, we'll make it through tonight. And uh, so we put our things in there, give them a couple bucks, get settled in. Nice view. Figure out what we got, what has to go in the fridge, and kind of sort through things. And like, okay, well, let's go, let's go down to, uh, let's go down to to dinner. I'm like, well, we kind of got settled in. Let's go down, and get something to eat or whatever. And we'll look at the pool, this, that, and the other, right? So we go down and uh, kind of torn around, and you know happy with me, but what's she going to do at this point, too? It's not your fault. It's not my fault, but it's kind of my fault, but got a little ahead of myself, and and this is where we're, you know, we'll make it through tonight. Sure, it's it's one of those fun things that you'll talk about on a podcast for an hour. Yeah, we'll just keep rambling on. And so... <laughs> it's that good of a story. So I'm like, alright, so we, we get a lift guy to take us down to the Jimmy Buffett, 5 o'clock somewhere, bar and grill. Oh, no, man, that's a good place. Right, to right on the water. Did you uh, step on a pop top? No, my flip flop stayed intact. You did not blow out your flip flop. So we go down. So good time. We have some lobster rolls. There's booze in the blender. They're playing music. They got boats coming up and down. And soon it will surrender. So that's a good time. So then we go. 
Go back over. Okay, now we're just going to go to bed, basically, right? Did you eat at Hamburger Paradise? So that's what my wife's. Why don't they have a cheeseburger in paradise on the menu? They don't have a cheeseburger in paradise on the menu. Yeah, it's it was like the deluxe burger or something. Oh, man. They're missing out. So They are missing out. So we go back, and we go back up to the, the room, and uh, we uh, close up shop, basically, watch a little TV, and we're going to bed. So, we got a flight at 6 a.m. Okay. Or maybe our flight was 9. We had to wake up at 6-something. Had to get up at 6. Okay. So, okay. It's about midnight. You hear people shouting and screaming. Well, apparently I was sleeping still. Apparently about midnight. People start shouting and screaming down the hallway. And a couple hours later, I wake up to screaming and shouting. People try and get into the door. and To your house? Uh, to our, <laughs> our door. Shaking the handles and, like, using profanities and obviously probably just just drunk. My wife's not too happy at this point. I'm not too happy at this point. More or less, I don't want to get killed. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's some, I mean, like, not just drunk people yelling, but aggressive, like, yeah, like, you know the difference between people upset or people getting ready to throw down? Was there stuff in your room when you got there? <laughs> not, not that I saw, but you, know, you, go, you always got to look for the dead bodies. Um, no, I meant, like, was somebody living there? I, possibly. I think these people thought these other people that they were with were in our room. I, thought they, I think they thought they had side-by-side rooms. They went out and had a little too much of a party night. They were a little upset with each other, trying to get in, bang in. Yelling, screaming. Um, may have been a, a domestic altercation going on. So what did you do? I look at my phone to see what time it is, and I see your flight has been canceled. Oh, gosh. <laughs> your flight is canceled, and you've been rescheduled for, uh, this was Friday, so it was like Saturday night at oh, 6 o'clock. And uh, not only that, but you got to fly to L.A., and then from L.A. to Seattle, and then from Seattle... To, to back to home at like, so I'd get home at like midnight or some crazy hour on Sunday. We were hoping to be home on Friday. I'm I'm sure your wife is really. Excited. I don't got a place to stay for another night now. This isn't going good at three in the morning. And we got people trying to come in. We got just stuff is going down, right? So. I'm trying to compose myself. There's people out. I'm not going outside. I'm not going to go shout because. I don't know if I'm going to get... This is Florida, right? You hear all the news stories. I might be getting shot. We got the... I've been talking so long that the fire's been put out and they're coming back to put away the truck. So people are uh, they're shouting out in the hallways. I'm thinking that's going to be a whole thing. I don't know. They're trying to get in... They're shaking the doors, trying to get in. And uh, so, uh, so I see... Well, I need to call the airline, right? Because this isn't... The, no. You're making my choices to stay at the Marriott look real good right now. No. So I call up the airline, and I'm like, no, this isn't going to happen. Well, luckily, I don't think there's many people on our 6 a.m. flight that found out that they're not going home this day or whatever. So they actually book us on a uh, Delta flight. Okay. Maybe that was the one that leaves at 6 a.m. Anyway, they book us on a Delta flight that's uh, one just one way, nonstop. we got to be at the airport in a couple hours or something like that, which is great. Sign me up for that one. Yes, I'll take it. (laughs) And so... So, okay, so I tell my wife, like, let's just pack up, because we've heard security has now came, and knocking on the door, get the bleep bleep out of here, blah, blah, blah. this is security! <laughs> and I'm like, okay, we're safe, security's here, hurry, let's get to the elevator, while security's there, because, you know... You want to get out. I can get it. out. So, yeah. once again, we're grabbing everything, throwing it, getting out of Dodge, we left, I mean, we left stuff in the fridge, which, obviously, what are you going to do with it? We left, like, toothbrush, uh, we left items behind, right? Personal items, probably some of my thrift and stuff, is left in this hotel room. Get to the, uh, well, okay, so I'm supposed to text this number to get my car back from the from the valet. <laughs> to get your car back? Give them five minutes, right? So I've texted the number so that they can have the car around front for me. <laughs> and <laughs> oh my I told God. you it got better. Oh my God. I told you it got better. So you just gave your rental car to some dude? Well, I'm a valet in front of the hotel. This, this part of the hotel. They were dressed up. Allegedly. Allegedly. They gave me a, a receipt. Tax deductible. <laughs> and so, I've texted the number. We, we sprinted to the elevator to get down. 
to, I, I say 22nd floor just because we're up high when this stuff's all going down, like, and they're blocking, I mean, both sides of the room. What you get, kind of what you gotta do at that point, like. Wow. You got your concealed carry, I, you, you can't fly with that. So, you eventually get out of the hotel. Not yet. So, we take the elevator down because securities came to detain these people that are, you know, fighting, to put it nicely. And not like just fighting like you and Belly had a, had a bad night. But like, this is physical. Yeah, they another fire going. Like, there's probably going to be police involved fighting. We try and get into our room fighting. So we take the, the, the whole thing down. So did well, the guy see you? The security guy? Or no, the, the guy who was trying to get in your room. I don't really know, to be honest with you. I didn't really look. We just beelined it for the, for the elevator, pushed down, and got in the elevator and got out of there. Wow. And so... Uh, we go down, well, when you know, Jorge is working at the front desk. <laughs> I go and talk to Jorge, but there's some other uh, drunk teenage, like, spring break kids there that I have to wait a minute for. i wait for my car anyways. Hip, hip. Hip, hip, Jorge. Hip, hip. Hooray. Jorge. Jorge. Not, not, there you go. <clears throat> so, I'm like, hey, man, like, this is what's going down, and we're leaving, because I don't feel safe right now. He doesn't need to know that I got a flight in two hours. Yeah. I'm like, this is, like, this is crazy, right? And, uh... He's like, yeah. I'm like, well, you guys said I'm security. I'm like, yeah, you said I'm security because not only were other people probably complaining, but you might have a murder on your hands up there. I'm guessing it's a nightly thing at the establishment you're staying at. <laughs> Four stars. And so I'm like, I don't know what's up, but like, uh, I'm not staying the night. I don't feel safe. We're leaving. I don't know where we're leaving to. Oh, well, here's my manager's card, color in the morning. There's nothing I can really do. I get it. He's just the night guy, right? He's really nice, actually. So I go outside, where's my car? <laughs> my car's not here, it's been more than five minutes. So I go over to the valet girl that's sitting in the, the little the booth, and I said, where's my car? And she kind of looks at me weird. Like, I texted, where's, where's, my, where's my car? Where's my car? Where do you get going? And she doesn't speak English real well either. Donde esta mi carro? And so I'm just like, and she like can't find the guy that's supposed to be getting my car, so she gets all upset and just kind of walks off. It's three in the morning. <laughs> There's people getting murdered. I just want my car to get to the airport. The vacation's been fun. We're going home. It's done. We need to get going. We're out there with our suitcases. I need that car to take it back to the rental place. I'm getting on my flight, and we're just getting home. And uh, so three, four minutes later, the guy comes. I'm like, dude, where's my, like, you know, kind of like. Where's my car? Dude, where's my car? <laughs> Well, she comes pilling around, and I've got a couple bucks. She's got to tip these people, right? She comes around, then she kind of gets out and gives all this attitude and starts yelling at the guy because he's not there. So I just throw my stuff in the back of the minivan because we ran the minivan, and she's storming off, getting that car. She's moved the seat up, so I moved the seat up, and we just beeline it out there, man. I didn't even have to, didn't even have to deal with that because she's busy yelling at this guy. <laughs> like, we are gone. <laughs> so uh, from that point, the story gets kind of a lot better. <laughs> So just did the police chase you because you looked like you're beeline out of the murder scene? No, the police are like, uh, yeah, you guys should have been there. <clears throat> so we go back, get on the flight, fly home. It's a nice flight. Got the rental, everything returned. I get home. It's like 10 a.m. here, something like that. And so I start calling the the place because I ain't talked to this manager because of everything that happened that night. I'm not paying for that. <laughs> so. Uh, can't get a hold of a manager. Ring, 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 ring. So I'm calling for like, how oh, it seemed like forever. Finally, I call the people. I probably shouldn't have said Priceline, but I did say Priceline, so I guess I'll keep saying it. So I call them. I have them third party patching me through back and forth. Talk to people. They're going to call me back. We're going to do this and that. We got to review our tapes. We got to do this. No, that didn't happen. But I'm like, call up Jorge. He gave me your name. He gave me your number. Hip, hip. Hip, hip, hooray. Jorge did me some good. So... I'll go long story short at this point. Like half a day after I get home of calling and trying to get put through whatever, I got reimbursed. I got my money back. How much money are we talking? Oh, it was about two fifty. It was a couple hundred bucks. Yeah, for a four star. And then they then they send me some things to sign to put reviews for my night. So I went ahead and filled out the reviews for my night. And uh I didn't cut any details there either, so if you're ever in the Hollywood, Florida area and you're thinking of a nice place to stay, look at four-star uh, places. 
don't stay at this place. I can't remember the name off the top of my head, and if I did, I probably couldn't say it anyways, but read the reviews. Murderer's Row? It may be by the side of the beach. By the side of the beach where the dead bodies may lie? It may have a name that sounds like by the side of the beach. Okay, well... Not um, Bayside, but by the beach side. You can figure uh, that one out. You know, usually when we do these shows, I got some <laughs> sort of... I mean, let's be honest. There's always no direction on where we're going. Well, you didn't know that story, so... That was for uh, my little brother that wanted me to tell that on the podcast. So, long story short... Long story longer. I don't know, long story short. You stayed in a place that you probably shouldn't have been in, A, because it was a little too fancy, and the guy who had it probably shouldn't have been renting out the I think the guy that was renting it out probably got in trouble for uh, people like me. I guarantee it. (laughs) Then, you went to another place that you probably shouldn't have been staying at. It was highly reviewed. How do you get better than a four-star? It was was mislabeled is what it was. Right off the beach, by the side of the beach, in a four-star hotel. Man, you are... uh... That's that's it's just like your 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 eBay stuff though. You you're not always going to hit a home run. No, you're not. But at the end of the day, I got a better flight. It's true. I got home faster, and I didn't end up paying for that night. It's and awful. I found out that my flight was canceled. I woke up and uh, had to find another place that night. Got another rental car. And got home like two days after when I was expecting to get home. So and, it kind of worked out. And perspective, you know what? You just took an hour to share that story with our listeners. Yeah, well, I hope it took me a lot longer to clear all that. That's just my time with Robert right there, one hour of my vacation time. <laughs> oh, man. I also, have... you know how they feed alligators? So this is what I was thinking. I'll eBay it up. Have you ever seen Swamp People? Yes, I've seen Swamp People. So you know how they go around to all the bait stations, and they put down their hooks, and they put what the alligators are looking for, and they go to the next one, they go to the next one. Yes. And then at the end of the day or whatever, they'll go back through their route and see if they got anything on the line and and harvest their gators, right? Okay. So I was thinking this because we did the Everglades boat tour where you go around on those things. And so in the uh, the hotel, I may have watched a little Swamp People. Well, I'm thinking on eBay... You set your lines, you put your stuff up, I'm a list and forget it kind of guy. That's what you say. And then I'll come back around when it sells, I'll find it, I'll get it to the people. Some people just put one thing in the line, and then they don't leave, and they can't figure out why the crocodiles, the alligators aren't coming again. Now they keep pulling up their line to see if they have to switch the bait, or if they have to change the pictures, or if they have to, you know, ship the shipping, change the shipping date or whatever. I'm a, I'm a swamp person. Just set your lines. Keep setting lines. The more lines you get, the more gators you're going to get. And then when it's time, come back around, harvest them. Send your stuff to your people. Keep them happy. Am I right? You were on a roll, my friend. So that's how we do it down the bayou. I also had an alligator try to jump in the airboat with me. And I jumped a little bit. And the guy that was driving the airboat thought that was pretty funny. Well, and said that scared you, didn't it? And I said, yes. Well, after all this, uh, this um, eBay or not, not Airbnb and stories. I think what we're gonna do here is we're gonna catch us a quick, uh, quick break. Quick break. I got actual. <laughs> I actually have stuff related. I didn't know we'd go that long, but I had to tell that story in its entirety, didn't I? Well, little Evie, that one's right for you, and you might be the only one that likes it. <laughs> If you like that, give me a, give me a holler. Give me a holler on the uh, eBay machine. Well, not on the eBay machine. On the Twitter, D. Roy Everett. And if you don't like it, Adam Beasley at AdamUpAccounting.com. You go text with him and tell him why you didn't like it. I, I don't know. That's the problem. It's, it's just one of those things like, let's be honest. Uh, I never thought anybody would be interested in buying Tupperware. You never know, man. You, never, you don't know until you try. And you'll find things that like, you think I thought that I'd be selling you know, M&M's or today that I'd sell a... Uh, I sold another Cubs uh, baseball milk chocolate bar for ten dollars. What I'm trying to get at is, is there just might be people that like Tupperware, but there might be people who like your crazy Cuban uh, <laughs> death story hotel. It was Robert, a nice place. Roberto still in your to be nice text message in your car kind of story. So hey, it's just how you roll, right? The yeah. Cuban sandwich. You ever had a Cuban sandwich? I, I have had a Cuban sandwich. Yeah, they, they are great. In fact, I better grab something so I can... Yeah, let's take a break, reset. Off. We're, we're going to do an extra long show because we missed last week. Thanks for listening to Death Pile and Taxes. 
the key word to that is taxes, which you need to file every year by April 15th. And if you run your own business, you probably are responsible for sales tax that you don't even know you need to file. So why don't you hit us up on our website, Adam Up Accounting. We've got several options down the right-hand corner. You can hit us with the uh, chat button or email us. <clears throat> Make sure to use the keyword death pile so our buddy Mr. D-Roy can know that he's, uh, his good work's paying off. Are you a fast, uh, a fast nickel or a slow dime? I would be a slow dime, I think. That's, that's kind of, you can do the fast things where you kind of take um, not all the profit you can get, but you're, you're more about the volume and get it out faster. Or you can set your, set your gator line. Your gator bait. Go back and check. I mean, every now and again, yeah, you might have to put some more bait on the hook. Maybe you didn't take good enough pictures. Maybe your description isn't quite good. No, go tweak it. Go look at it. But you don't just stand there and look for one thing when you can be setting, you know, a lot more lines. Uh, you know, I, that brings me up a question. Like, is this is we're starting to, uh, you know, increase the number of postings that we have listings. Uh-huh. If I understand, you can do a hundred listings for free. Is that right? I think so. Okay, I'm, I'm past the point where I know they, so, they tweak that a little bit, or they'll give you free ones every now and again. So, so how does that work? Like, so if we're gonna, you know, because obviously we're gonna set a lot of gator bait here. Yeah, we're gonna get past that. Would you suggest that I have my own and my my wife has her own, or should we do one store together? Just do a store. It's easier with a store. You, you can set the level. I'm sure you've seen the different levels. No, that's why I'm asking. Okay, you. they got different. They they've added a few, so they got like a basic. Uh, they used to have three, like a basic, a, a premium, and then like an anchor is what they called it. Okay. Um, with the basic, you get. I you'd have to look up several more listings. Okay. Where I'm at with the premium, I think you get. 2,000 listings, something like that. Um, if you go above that, you can get, I mean, to where you get tens, tens of thousands of listings for, for a monthly um, fee. fee. Yeah, yeah. And with that fee, that's where I'm getting the, the shipping supplies. Mm-hmm. Um, you get the Terra Peak now. You get some different perks for having the stores. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have to look up that Terra Peak thing. Yeah. So you might as well, I'd say, just get you a store and just start listing as much as you can to make it to where you're starting to, uh, to accumulate to make those listings work. If you it. get out, so if I go over my, I think it's 2,000 listings, something like that, Yeah. I think I have to pay, it's either 10 cents or 5 cents a month for uh, for an extra listing instead of, I think it's a quarter or something, okay. where you're at probably over the 100. So there, it's reasonable. <clears throat> and so yeah, say, okay, say I'm over my 2,000 listings or, or whatever the, the number is, I have to pay 5 cents a month, like, so say I have an item that's a couple hundred dollars or whatever at 5 cents a month, that's nothing. Yeah. So. I mean, and like you... Like, you could tell me it's all tax deductible at that point, so... But, yeah, you want to make money. I'd say get a store. Another thing, people worry about the name of their store, and they'll do weeks and months on that. Why? Why? No one's shopping by the name of my store. No one knows the name of my store. eBay doesn't feature the name of my store. It's it's not... I thought about it, but, like, you can have it be whatever. As long as you got the item, people yeah. are searching for the item, not for uh, your store name. No. So a lot of people get caught up mm-hmm. on that, but I'd say, I'd say find a store... And just kind of get going that way because you get the you get the other perks with that as well. I'm still trying to come back. From the... <laughs> hey, I got I got. Did you see this Terrell Owens story? I don't know what uh, the TO story. TO apparently he had a storage uh, locker that he uh, forgot that he had and didn't pay the bill on. Nice. And you know what happens to storage units when you don't pay the bills on? Oh yeah. Somebody snagged up TO's locker that was full of all sorts of memorabilia. Yep. And. Uh, I don't remember what they paid, but it wasn't much. And he wasn't none too happy when he found out. So somebody made out like a bandit with, uh, you know, signed helmets, Super Bowl memorabilia, just all this stuff. Why would you put that in a storage unit? I, you know, you can look at a lot of T.O.'s uh, things that he's done in his life and say, just, why would you do that? I don't Maybe your house. I don't know. Why would somebody store valuable things in a storage unit? I don't know, but they do. That's why you get all them shit. I mean... I, no, I just don't, I don't get that. I'm not a storage unit kind of guy. Now with, with eBay and stuff going, I'm thinking, well, maybe I should just have one to have as like a workshop warehouse place. But yeah, I don't know. Or temporary storage, you know. Yeah, sometimes people are, I understand there's a purpose for them. You're moving, you got yeah, stuff. I, I get but it. yeah, I don't know why you have your Super Bowl helmets or whatever, like a storage unit full. I'm sure whoever bid on that just uh, thought they'd won the jackpot because they had. I don't know what they thought once they found out whose it was, and I don't. I'm not even sure what they had in there, but I thought that was kind of interesting news. Yeah, yeah. that's. I don't know. That's. 
you don't want to get into an O.J. Simpson type moment. <laughs> yeah, you never know, right? Carol's not the most stable guy. <laughs> no, <laughs> but no. I'm sure the guy's got some great things that he's, he's probably going to put on the internet and uh, make some good money off or have a new collection. I don't know. So, getting back to what I was going to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somebody hopped up all the time today. Uh, when's the last time you checked out the old uh, Podbean stats? Um, I'll usually just check in when I'm uploading the shows and kind of look around a little bit. Uh, did you check out where our newest listener's from? I did not. Can you say, parlez-vous français? Oh, France, huh? We got a France listener. There you go. It's, it's, it's worldwide. It's the World Wide Web, my friend. That's unreal to me, man. It's crazy. We need to get some closer. We, we got most of the Western United States. Hey, here's what I'm thinking. Like, people listen. If you like this, if you enjoy it, Tell a friend, what's it going to hurt, right? Say, hey, you want to listen? Like, say, hey, listen, there's people always, you'll see all these scams online about working from home. Yeah. I'm trying to sell you a get slow, or get rich slow scheme. Not get rich quick scheme. This is a get rich slow scheme, but you will make money. Did you just say skeet, 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 skeet? Skeet, 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 skeet. Oh, the big girl love, love, love. Skates. But no, I mean, you know, people, there's stay at home moms, there's elderly people that can't make it off whatever they're getting on Social Security, there's young kids trying to pay off college bills. This is something that can work. I know it can work because it's worked for me. It can work for anybody. I, mean, I think that should give me our, well, I don't know, we're going to have an hour worth of Derek's one eyed side comments. Maybe we'll just, I don't know. <laughs> no, what I'm saying is, how about you, you get rich slow scheme? I mean, that's what it is, right? Like, yeah, there's people that make a lot of money off this. Like, like you're saying, three hundred bucks a month. That's easy. You'll, you'll easy. That was easy. But there's people making, you know, tens of thousands. There's people I, making millions. Really, I, mean, I think you have to just come into things realistic. Yeah, go slow. Learn as you go. Maybe you don't want to sell. Like, maybe I can say this item sells real great for me. And you think I don't care about that. Yeah. Right. I don't care. But vintage Tupperware. Like it's working for you. I, I think I think there's a market there. I mean, you can I know find it. I'm sure you can find it. That's the thing. You got you got to just you know you learn as you go. Well, I was I was texting with my buddy old uh, Michael Benjamin Painter oh. earlier today. Yeah, and uh, that was some of our camo talk that I'll come back into camo. But I was telling him if we could just go through people's basements in like just the town that we grew up in, absolutely, we'd be millionaires. I agree. People got so much stuff that they they held on to that are down in totes or something. Whether it's video games, whether it's vintage T-shirts, concert T-shirts, Tupperware, Tupperware stuff that they just they don't even remember that they have. Like if we could just get down there and you know we could give them. Money, like, not even, I'm not saying rip people off. You could pay them a fair amount, get their stuff, and you put it on the internet. You'd be a millionaire just in our small town that we grew up in. So, I mean, look across, like, you got the map up here of people that are listening to us. Look across the United States. Like, there is so much stuff out there. My dad was talking to me on this trip, too, and he kind of said the same thing with the podcast. He said, aren't you afraid of, like, the kind of that same creating your competition or, like, you're giving out all your secrets and stuff? No. <laughs> no, I'm not. Do you know how many millions of pieces? Because there's so there much. Are? There's so much. There's a lot more buyers than sellers on eBay, it's, right? It's just crazy. So the more people, so so you, like, I want somebody to buy something from you because they're gonna have a good experience. You're gonna send it to them. You're gonna ship it. You're gonna give them a fair price. They're gonna be happy with it. I don't want some dirt bag down the road that doesn't know what he's doing. Send it off in a McDonald's bag. Sends them a broken item. They get all upset and have a bad experience. I want people. Like who are listening to us, or like your friends that are listening to us, to do it, do it well, and then people are going to come back and buy more on that site. Eventually, it's going to come to buy my stuff. It, it was funny. We were watching uh, one of those, um, just a YouTube video, and that was one of the things that the guy said. Because you've got an established store, like so I'm just starting. Yeah. And that's kind of what he says: is you know, you need to kind of share it, saying, "Hey, I'm new at this, but we're going to ship it out. We're excited to get this item to you." You know, make it to where people can feel like they trust you to send it to them. Yeah, I mean, that, that's building up your feedback. That's also, if you come into a problem, say you run out of shipping supplies, say, hey, send them a message. Say, hey, I'm new at this. I got it. I'm just going to go find something to ship it. I want it to be safe, so yeah. I'm not sending you something that's going to get broke. They'll be like, oh, cool. This is a real person I'm dealing with. It's not some big corporation. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. You know, 99% of the time, you're going to have a positive experience with the people that you're dealing with. That was one thing. Somebody tried buying some uh, candy. 
uh-huh. Easter candy, but <laughs> she accidentally tried to buy it, and then she says, "Oh, I don't have, I don't get paid till Friday." Yeah, yeah, that happens. <laughs> so that's you know, you just learn how to deal with it. Yeah, and some people like so, like I say, it's your store. Some people absolutely not. I need the money right now. Some people are like, yeah, wait till Friday. Yeah, exactly. And that's the, isn't that the crazy thing? So Easter's coming up. You can go down to the Walgreens and you can buy Easter candy, or you can buy it from me on the internet, and I get paid Friday. Cool. Sounds good to me. Send me the money, I'll send you the candy. I'm just, the more and more we do it, and that's honestly like, you know what I'm excited about for tax season to be over, but you know what, I, I'm actually going to spend a little time with my, my wife, my kids, and you know what, we're going to find something to do. And it's, Yeah, it's a good bonding, I mean, it's a great family job, I don't know, if I've ever told you this, growing up, did, my family had a family job, we took care of the car wash, did you know that? So, so we'd go down to the car wash. Whoa, whoa. You know that means something different in Nevada. I yeah, where you grew up taking care of that could be a whole different. Oh, I still need to get into to old uh, Art Bell and uh, some of the places well, you grew no, up. At. We're, we're not getting there yet. But what I'm saying is <clears throat> that was a mafia type business. Oh, was it? Well, if you think about it, it's cash money. Cash, that's true. So, well, we didn't own the car wash. Well, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you took care of the coinage. Well, we'd go down, and we'd clean out the vacuums, and we'd take all the coins from the vacuums, and we could keep those. So we'd be digging through the dirty hairballs and cigarette butts to find the quarters or whatever, and we'd go put them in a jar and wash our hands and, and uh, I, you know, fill up the, the soap and uh, make sure, clean out the base, spray them down, all that. So we had a little family job, right? That's a good job. And it was good for kids to, to learn, you know, the value of money, work ethic, whatever. <clears throat> I don't know what we used, probably for like uh, school clothes shopping and stuff is what we used the money for, I think. Something like that. In the husky section? In the husky. Those husky jeans cost a little more. A little more fabric, like you learn on eBay. More material. <laughs> a little more material is going to cost you a little more. But what I'm saying is, with eBay, make it a family job. Like, you're not digging through uh, vacuums or whatever, but you take the kids to the thrift store, and they learn this entrepreneurism. Yeah. Is that a word? That I'm, is. I'm kind of ton- tongue-tied, but... They learned that, okay, this costs $5. It's so the whole Mark Cuban started selling uh, stamps. Yep. He went to a stamp show, bought a stamp for a couple bucks, went and sold it for five bucks, whatever. Yeah. And kind of, you kind of get that ingrained in your mind that I can buy something, I can learn what this is, and go sell it to somebody else for double the price. And you know what the best part is, is what you're talking about, is that's what I'm trying to instill. And I tell people that all the time. I had some people in here the other day doing their taxes, and they says. Hey, you know what? What can we do? Like, what could we do? And I'm pretty open with people. I says, you know what? You can stop buying your kids stuff. Yeah, you're not doing them a favor. You're not helping them out. You're you're really not because now it's a it's a two dollar here. It's a twenty dollar here. It's a two hundred. It's a two thousand. It's a twenty thousand. Well, I get like I don't have kids, but I get that you want you want to give your kids things. You want them to have a good life. Well, yeah, but they got to understand the value of a dollar. But it means a lot more if you can instill to them. That, that that's what they won't learn. If it's just hand-fed to them. We were talking, so we're down on this trip, and we're in this nice place, and we've seen all these rich people and rich kids, and we're talking, I mean, we went and saw the yachts. We saw Cuban's yacht on this little beach tour and stuff that you go on. And uh, me and my dad having that same talk of, like, these kids that grow up, because you'd see the millionaires, they take you by all the, you know, shacks, um, mansion or whatever. You'd see that they have kids' toys and stuff out, right? Yeah. And my dad's like, there's no way those kids can grow up in a normal... They can't. They've had all this money. How do you get them to function and, and understand life, right? Like, it's just not possible, kind of. So you're giving your kids the opportunity to learn what money is at work and, and have that value, have that connection. So not only can they create their own cash, hopefully become very successful, but they have the roots to, okay, I know what a dollar's worth. You know, the cool thing is, is like I said, while you are away, we had a uh, pizza party. <laughs> <clears throat> I missed the pizza party. You were on your trip, and you, you know, and I get it. You just went up to Salt Lake because you're flying out early. But we had some friends here at the office. I heard, I heard it was a good time had by all. It was a good time had by all. You, but you know the thing I noticed when everybody left. I don't think that any of our vehicles. I'm trying to think how many of us were here. There's like six, seven of us, seven of us here. Seven of you, but you can get a podcast. Uh, I, I wasn't going to go into the podcast. We probably didn't hear what was going on. There's no way. And we only got two mics, and it just, you couldn't have edited that thing well enough. Um, Actually, I did. That's why you didn't have a podcast. That's true. No usable material. No, but when we all left, I don't think one of our vehicles were newer than a 2010. Yeah. I, I, out of all of 
us, I, as I, it was one of those things I noticed. I'm like, you know what? I don't care what you drive. It doesn't matter. Like, why would you spend money on a vehicle that, like, it literally means nothing? Well, I was talking, you know, my brother-in-law, Cole. I think I want to have him come on the, the show in a couple of weeks here because he sells cars. He likes to buy them, fix them up, kind of flip them. He sold car parts on eBay, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then we were talking the same thing last week about depreciation. Like, yeah. he, he had this Infinity or something that he ran. They went to San Francisco. But he was looking up half, like 50% in like a year or two depreciation from brand new to, to use. That's crazy. And if you don't know what that means, that means you spend $50,000 on this brand new car because it's brand new. And literally, the second you drive it off the lot, it's worth less. And in a year's time, it's worth like thirty grand. Yeah, this, uh, this was really like two years later, twenty five, twenty five yeah. uh, thousand dollars for the yeah. same car. That's yeah, fifty grand. It's or it's whatever. You, you know, you got to know where to spend money. And not saying that I get it. Like sometimes it's a necessity. It's this, but unless you, that kind of a vehicle that you can pay for like cash money, you're literally like wasting away because all it does is drive from a to B. Point A to point B. It's, it's everyone's, uh, you know, I'm a big Clark Howard guy, but your number one expense for everyone is mortgages, right? This is Clark Howard. I need to work on my Clark Howard impression. I'm going to get a good one. Because he, he's not like how we had him on the last one. Um, and then number two, most people's vehicle, right? Your, yeah. Your number two expense. How often are you actually in your vehicle for it to be your number two expense well, in life? And, and let's be honest. I mean, most households, there's... Two vehicles. Sometimes now there's kids. There may be three, but let's just say most households. I think I listened the other day. It's like four hundred and seventy dollars is the average car payment. That's times, crazy. Times two. I mean, that's more than your house payment. It's getting up there. I, I get that you want something nice and reliable. Well, yeah, I but get yeah, that. like you're saying, you can find something. That, I mean, cars are built pretty well right now. If you do a little research. You can find something, right? Tell the wheels fall off, buy something else, right? You know, you, like I got a new truck, and new truck. I mean, it's two thousand seven. Yeah, you know, did a lot of review searching and looked at it, and you know what? It's it's a great vehicle for us, and cash is king. And there's a couple things, so I do. I didn't pay cash for it, but it's two hundred and seventy dollars a month. It's affordable. I mean, and if you got the money, I guess to go out and get you a brand new car, and that's what you want to do. Do it. If that's your call. But a lot of people don't, and they get themselves in bad situations financially. And like like you're saying, they come to you and say, "What can I do? Where can I cut? What what you know? How can I make more money?" Yeah. You know, my big thing right now, now too you is... say sell stuff on eBay, listen to my podcast. Yeah, exactly. I know, I, I do. But the other thing, too, is think about where your retirement is. You know what I tell a lot of people right now? Sell your house. Like, well, you're living in your retirement. Like, a lot of these, a lot of people, they don't have, uh, you know, planned very well. He says, you know what, you owe, like, 100000 on your house, and you could sell that sucker for 450000 you know what? You you can sell that, move out, rent a place, and yeah, you know what? You might have to buy a little humble pie, but you know what? Who cares? Get a nice condo if the kids are out. Something. I mean, there's op- there's options. There's there's always other you options. Can't, you can't eat your house. No, but, you, but money's tight. And, and the thing is, and I guess where kind of where we're going with it, it, it's it's the financial freedom that you know that you can actually do something that you want to do, not hate your job. Well, and the funny thing is, so I have, I've been kind of, I kind of kayfabe my whole eBay thing for a lot, right? Like, I don't tell a lot of people, tell up, up to this podcast, my wife's actually said, you never talk about this, you've been so secretive, and now you're telling everybody everything, <clears throat> which is true. You're welcome. Except, except for, yeah, except for I have had uh, people come to me and ask me, like, not necessarily like I'm, I, not that they know what kind of money or whatever I have, but they, I, I can't make it. Things are tough. Yeah. This, that, or whatever. And so I'd be like, hey, let me tell you something. And I'd tell them about eBay. I'd say, this is what I'm doing online. This is about what I'm doing. This is how you do it. Kind of like what I've told with you. And most of them just don't do it. I can't figure that part out. I'm like, here's the here's the floor button. Give it a try. You, you know what the thing is? is this is I, I listen to a lot of uh, Gary Vaynerchuk. Mm-hmm. Like I said, he talks exactly about this. And I, that's really why I said, Derek, we're doing the podcast. And he said, we're doing it. You know, I'm, I'm tired of... Saying we're going to do it, we've done it. Yeah, it's up now. And that's the thing is, is it's, it's rolling. It is rolling, and th- it's so funny because I listened to something he was saying is the amount of content that we're creating right now will go on forever. Evergreen, evergreen. Like uh, my great grandkids will be able to hear this. That's that's the idea, right? And hopefully, it's still the same thing of like go out there and hustle, kids, make you some money. Well, the, 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 I'm, this is going to sound crazy. 
the internet ain't going away, people. The internet's going to be here for your great grandkids. And you know in what? In some way, shape, or form. We're, we're not ending the show, but I'm just saying, certainty, we're all going to die. Oh, yeah. And we all got stuff. But before we get there, yeah. Before we get there, we can talk about camo. Okay. Well, I know I was. So I just saying we're not getting there to end the okay, show. Okay. All right. I was just just throwing it out. I've just there. had some some strong opinions. No, no. I'm just was letting you know that the internet's not going away. But people, we are. People are gonna. We are. We're gonna die. You're Mr. Death. Well, I'm just saying it's gonna <laughs> happen. Like, just just. Look you tell at me it. that the, the Father Time is undefeated. Yes, he is. <laughs> there, there's the most valuable asset in the world is time. Time. And regret is poison. Like, don't regret things that you should have done. Or, or don't. So people will think about the past. You can't do anything about that. You can't change that, right? No. I like, learn from it, but you can start. Like, maybe you don't want to sell on eBay. Whatever. You can change tomorrow. We still have 24 hours, like you say. You can still go list. You can go oh. find stuff. Like, just move forward. Here's the thing: is is I, I you know, you're gonna get into your thing, but <clears throat> we're gonna be able to say it one day. Like, you know what? We had 23 people download our Car Malone. You know what? We had 260 people download our Car Malone story, and we talked about it. But you know what I'm going to do? We're not going to get into the Jerry Sloan thing. Oh, we got to get 60, yeah. we got to get there. But remember our uh, our phone call we had with our buddy uh, Nico? Yeah. I'm going to New York. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, that you, you're gonna have to. We're gonna have to get you some sort of a, your phone. You're gonna have to record that. Oh, I think we will. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I didn't even think about that. I I, I thought about it the other day because I want to make it tax deductible. Tax deductible. Hey, well, I'm at it. Everyone's liking these. Where's on sale? Guess where's on sale this week for travel? What? I got tongue tied right there. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Australia. Ooh, down you can the- get flights to Australia round trip for under six hundred dollars right now. A little down under, huh? Under six hundred dollars. Oh, you know what was on round trip? You know what was on the other day? Crocodile Dundee? No, oh. no, that's a good thing. The Adventures Down Under. <laughs> There's this show called The, I, the I, Crocodile I, Wrestler Guy, Steve Irwin. Remember him? Who is dead? That Steve. He didn't see the stingray coming. <laughs> no, um, I never watched regular TV, and we just happened to be at some family's house, and Sunday night they had uh, this uh, Ellen's Game of Games. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And I had a client who won some money on that show, and literally we turned it on, and it was their episode. Oh, really? Yeah. So we watched it, and you know they won. So I knew that they won money. I'm like, hey, watch this. <laughs> watch they're they're going to win some money. They won some money. I got a good feeling about this one. Seventy five k, man. Wow. Yeah. Maybe I need to go on Ellen's Game of Games. I'd love to get on one of those shows. But anyways, they ask you like these questions, and it you just triggered my mind. They says, "What is the large?" Uh, Air um, instrument that's played in Australia. The didgeridoo. They didn't know. I knew what it was. Oh man, I had hundred k. I know. <laughs> that's so you down under. That's how didgeridoo sounds. Like that. You call that a knife? I knew you'd do crocodile Dundee. I knew we could get you there. Oh, anyways, I don't know where the heck we're going. I was just throwing that out because that's on sale. Oh so yeah. People are liking this stuff. I don't know why. Disneyland, still on sale, I think. Yeah, they, yeah they're getting up pre-Star Wars. Uh, you can sell Hawaii, still pretty cheap, and now now you can uh, fly to you Australia know, for under $600 round trip. That's we, crazy. We had a great... Um, we listen. you got to listen to your family. They, they know. We had a brother-in-law, Brady. Uh-huh. Who, shout out. Fan he, of the show. Fan of the show. He told us a while ago, he said, you know, you ought to get this Delta Sky Mile card. And uh, we did. And you know what? We're flying to New York for nothing. Well, that's how. So I have, with the business, I have an Alaska Sky Miles card. Hey, there you go. And, uh, every year I get a companionship flight, so it makes me have to use it. So that's why we're on vacation. So the trip down to Florida and back was uh, buy one, get one, basically. And, and then I'm getting the miles with everything I buy at thrift stores. And, 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 and mentally, I buy everything on Hotels.com. And every 10, I get a free room. So it, like, makes yeah. me feel good. You can try an Airbnb. You can get in some nice places. You just make sure you know when you're checking out. Oh, goodness sakes. Well, we've been, we've been going for a while. Hey, let's hurry in this camel talk. All right, yeah. It's funny you say that. Because I brought it up. Because you, you need to tell us what the story at the office was. All right. For, for starters. And then I reached out because, you know, I have a lot of people that like to hunt and go outdoors. And apparently, I thought Realtree was an expensive brand. Boy, was I wrong. So you're saying you got a faux pas here on camo? Apparently, Realtree is uh, 
like the Walmart of camo compared to what you can get into. So I'm not a um, stylish man. I don't, you know, I'm not a slob, but I don't wear Tommy Hilfinger or... Uh, but you sell it now. Oh, you better believe I sell it. It's not my thing. You know, I just, I'm a pretty simple guy, you know, um, but uh, high class camo. You know, I've got some, some people I work with and they, they're very stylish. They're in the know. I'm not. Apparently, holy jeans and camels like the thing. Depending on where you live. Well, where we live, that's the mm-hmm. thing. And, and when me, like, that's what you wore because you were poor. Yeah, growing up, that was what we wore because, yeah, dad's old hunting clothes. But <laughs> you were poor and you had your holy jeans that haven't patched up yet. No, literally. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. That's what it was. And that's when I see this, I'm like... How is this cool now? Like, how is this the thing? Like, I had to wear it because I was poor. <laughs> so that's what I we was saying. We went to the Army Surplus store and we were buying because you could get 10 shirts for a buck or whatever. You better believe it. So now it's like, I, I don't even ask how much things cost. But that's the thing is, we were at a, a, a place we haven't ate it. We went to, I'll, I'll say it on the air. We went to Cubbies. No, not Cubbies. Ch- Chucky's. Chubby's. No, no, the place that we live by. The place that we live by? Yeah, by the Maverick. The, Dairy Queen? No, the other place on the corner. We don't got too many places in town. Krabby's. Yeah, Krabby's. No, that's a good place. I go there. I had never been there, so we got to go to Krabby's, and there was a... You uh, think they'd serve seafood? No, they serve Krabby Patty burgers. like Which I don't know how they haven't got sued by SpongeBob yet. I don't know. But anyways, we go there, and there's this, there's a girl there just waiting, and she has camo with flowers on it. Camo with flowers on it. Yes. Like real flowers? No, like the, like the, the shit. Design. Right? The okay. design. Okay. And I thought, man, I am so off. Like, this is the thing. It's the hot thing. I, uh, so, so, reached out to the, the buddies and... The camo experts. The camo experts. Apparently, real tree, like I said, was for the poor man. That's the kind of stuff that I do about. Apparently, you can get, like, camo, people have camo uh, dress coats. They wear to church and what have you. Wow. Business meetings attire. Apparently, there's a Sitka. I, I asked for some names of camo that uh, so I'd sound smart, but I don't even know how to pronounce it. There's all these these fancy names of, of camo places or, or designs and, and people that make them. Companies. Apparently, Sitka can cost you about as much as a, a house payment if you get the right coats and things like that. I don't know. But I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say there's fancy camo. I've been convinced. If you can go to church and have a... Uh, a tie and or or suit coat, or if you can spend a, a house payment on it, that's fancy, my friend. Yeah, but they're not wearing that around day to day. Well, at those prices, you can't afford to. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Day to day, well, do you wear fancy clothes day to day, or is it special occasions? Uh, uh, what do you call it? Spended? Spend? Splendid? I mean, this half camo zipper jacket for a woman's hoodie... $148. Look at this at uh, Sitka, S-I-T-K-A. Just look up some of those prices. I was I was amazed. And uh, the, the friend I was telling you to talk about earlier, he had owned some of it. He says it's the most expensive stuff that he owns, basically, wardrobe-wise. Wardrobe so what we're saying is you hang out in these highfalutin areas. Apparently down in Florida, I should have been rocking some camo. You're saying it's Yardies, garage sales. Stuff to be looking for. I just read something. They had an article on, on a, uh, you know, something I read. It says, if you live in San Francisco, you can live on billionaire's trash. That's it. And it talked about there buying you know. buying their stuff. Well, that's, yeah. That, I mean, when you Holy. go. <laughs> yeah. So when you're going to your yard sales, I mean, where are you going? Are you going to the rich area of town or are you going to me and you? And you go to our yard sales, you know? Well, in our yard sales, you're looking for Tupperware. and those, yeah, those I guess you just got to know your areas and what you're looking for. But, yeah, you can go. I know I've been to some yard sales before where people, because they're just trying to get rid of stuff, right? Yeah. And so once you learn some of these brands and stuff, I'm amazed at what people. So what I was people don't know. I was telling you about the Burberry the other day. I saw it, yeah. So I, I, the same yard sale, somebody was selling a, a uh, Cabela's. It was a camouflage Cabela's jacket, and there was this Burberry coat. Now, they want a top dollar for the Cabela's jacket. Of course. But the Burberry coat, they sold me for like 10 bucks. It was worth, you know, a few hundred. So, I mean, it's just, you got to learn what you're looking for, I guess. I think this is good prep time for me. Because, you know, it's given me a couple months. Because, you know, we just put us on the air, what, a month and a half ago? 
I'm not even sure. Okay, but but the, we've been doing this for since July. No, okay. not, not July. July of last year. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just going along with it. Yeah, it sounds right. Well, mentally, we've been doing this for 15 years. That's true. Um, but we just started really talking about it. But it's really kind of given me some good preparation as we get into the yardy season. And I'm pumped, man. I'm excited. I mean, that's the thing. You'll, you'll build up, and as long as you keep it listed and have some places to store it. Some people have plenty of space. Some people don't. I mean, it's all, like, say, personal. Find your store size, and then just, just load up. That's that's what I'm saying to these people. Go go tell your friends. If you think anyone can, can you know, use this in their life, if uh, word of mouth referral works better than 25-star reviews or whatever, even though we do want those. Yeah, we need those. And anyway, so we appreciate those people listening and and you're going to understand this about us. We we don't know where the show's going. It's got to... No, I mean, yeah, we just come and we just ramble. And uh, I have a few notes, but that basically we just go where it goes. And hopefully the things we talk about, you can really... I never sold anything on eBay. Well, I did back in like the whatever. Yeah, well, so books, a lot of people sold books. maybe one or two. Yeah, or books. a couple of things, but... But we started and it really opens you... Because it's chitching... Well, I mean, and we're saying eBay, maybe you're a Facebook Marketplace person. Yeah. Maybe you're a Craigslist. Maybe you're Macari. Just just get a list and find where you're comfortable at. That's, share this with people. There's no excuses because I've never done it, and I've already done it. If you have a stay-at-home person, an elderly person, you're trying to pay off some student loans, you just want some extra cash, who doesn't fit in those categories? We're going to coin that phrase. Which one? Get rich slow. I might have stole that. I don't know. The rich Get rich slow scheme. Okay, can we use that? Yeah, we can now. It tells somebody tells me that we can't. I don't know. Half the stuff I say, I don't know if I've made it up or uh, heard it from somebody. So Get rich, slow scheme. And it's the get rich, slow scheme. That's going to be slash the Florida story. That's going to be with You, you have with like one of those like cool things because you told me, and now I, as I look at things, BOLO. BOLO, yeah. How can we get like an acronym for get rich slow scheme? I don't. My brain's fried. We'll have to think this one over the week. I don't want to embarrass myself all right now. <laughs> you already did one horn matador. Hey, I wasn't embarrassed. I stood proud. It reminded me of me and my uh, me and my friends used to. So I used to work at a, 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 I'll just say a, a local motel that had a, a, a had a safari hotel. Had a pool in it and. There may have been a few occasions that we'd like to to go and uh, go to dip a little skinny, and some of us went Periscope up, and some of us didn't. Not going to name names. Wow, just saying. Um, yeah. Uh, on on that note, yeah, there's two things that are certain. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll get back on track next week. Two things in life that are for certain. We got to get this on a regular. This vacation thing really. Yeah, this is out. like our longest episode. This is making up for the show that you didn't get last week too. So the, the bonus episode. The bonus episode. We appreciate you getting us to that Carm loan. Let's get to the Jerry Sloan. Oh, we got. Um, and then Sloan. we'll have more and more. So just yeah. uh, keep it rolling. Two things in life that are for certain. We ain't going anywhere. That's for certain. We ain't going for anywhere. Let people know that we ain't going nowhere and they should give us a listen. And uh, what else isn't going anywhere, Adam? You will die. Well, don't get so threatening with me. Why? I'm still kind of scarred from last Friday night's hotel adventure where I thought I might die that night. <laughs> and when you die, you will have to pay taxes. No, only two things in life that are for certain. And that's death piles. And taxes. <laughs> <laughs>